Before 1978, Japan had no influence in the gaming market, but it all changed with one title, named Space Invaders. Created by a single person, Tomohiro Nishikado single-handedly designed the hardware, programmed the game and drew the graphics. He had previously worked on Gunfight. Anyway, players would endlessly battle against a number of aliens that would progress down the screen. Interestingly, they would get faster as they were destroyed. This wasn't part of the game, but simply the computer slowing down less and less as there were fewer aliens to draw on screen. You could hide behind destructible walls and get bonus points for targeting the bonus craft at the top. The high score feature made it more competitive than the earlier arcade machines since you had more to play for. Despite the groundbreaking Atari 2600 having been released the previous year, it didn't come out on the console until 1980. I could happily make a whole video about this one landmark game, but I won't. The Magnavox Odyssey 2 console came out with its indestructible keyboard. The first one was out in 1970 and was the first proper console. The second marketed itself as more than a console with teaching functions and a small but respectable list of games. Midway released the Valley Astrocade which was very powerful for its time but was very hard to program. It was more of a PC than a console when it came out. It supported up to four players and even sounded like an arcade but suffered from launch issues and was around for about five years but didn't make that big a splash. It was very expensive and had more ambition than actual success. Bit of a shame. Another machine that didn't do too well was the APF, which had a terrible lineup of games but later came out with a cool feature where you can make your own. But nobody bought it and it disappeared. In the arcades, it was all about Space Invaders, but Atari released a football game which I'm very impressed with. Just look at that! So much detail! Right down to the NPCs. It would scroll around to give you enough space for an entire pitch. However, once football season was over, the game kind of disappeared. Also, you had to pay for 90 seconds of gameplay, and you had to control it with a painful trackball. That probably didn't help much either. In all honesty, apart from those titles, this year was a bit of a sticky limbo for games. The Atari 2600 was still in its early years and was lacking any of the groundbreaking launches that it would get later on. I'm sorry to say that this is one of the first years where I have not researched every game title, because there were so many, all with such little information about them and all so boring that you wouldn't want me to go into them. I get depressed simply reading out the names of most of them. Here are some of the less dull ones. Breakout was released for the consoles. None other than Steve Jobs was tasked with working on it. It's a long and complicated story, but without Breakout, we might not have Apple in its current state. Space War was released for arcades as well, a remake of the original 1962 game, which predates even this series. This is what it looked like. It's more like an interactive radar, along with a number of other titles that had previously only been out on arcade machines. Superman was one of the first games to include a pause function. The player had to fix a bridge and capture a load of bad guys before returning to life as Clark Kent in the shortest amount of time. There was a two-player mode where one player would steer left and right, while the other would go up and down. That's probably the poorest supported two-player mode that I've ever heard of. Konami also released their first arcade game, named Metal Gear Solid 2. Nah, just kidding. It was called Block Game, and was about as exciting as it sounds. Then again, I suppose that Minecraft could easily have been called that instead. But no, it wasn't as interesting as Minecraft. One of the first sim games, named Killer Shrews, was released on a mainframe computer. Though there's hardly anything about it now, it couldn't have been a runaway success. Nintendo released Color TV Game 15, which was a bit like the one they released last year, but with more titles. And there you have it, 1978 for video games. Stay tuned for 1979 with the release of hundreds of Space Invader knockoffs and lots, lots more.